time arriving, but even so, conditions earlier today were downright miserable. KTV's Ken Pritchett reports now from Blue Canyon. Heavy rain and snow in the Sierra made for treacherous conditions all day today and tonight. Blinding snow has all but shut down life in the mountains. Caltrans mandated chain controls over the summit earlier today because there were blizzard conditions with wind gusts in excess of 60 miles per hour. We just came from the top and it's really, really bad. The Markovich family drove over the summit and was forced to seek shelter to reattach snowboards to their roof, which were blown off in the strong winds. Everything, wind, snow, rain, everything. More than 230 Caltrans personnel and 130 snowplows worked to keep traffic moving on Interstate 80 as the snow level dropped in the afternoon. We still have two other waves of weather to come through, and those waves are going to be much colder and probably will have more significant snowfall than what we've already seen. The Markovich family left just in time to miss the worst of the snow, but this is not a time to travel, that's for sure. At lower elevations, it rained today in sheets. The interstate remained open as heavy rain and strong winds battered drivers. Traffic was light, which was good for the highway patrol, but bad for the chain installers. We've been doing maybe one to two cars an hour because everybody said stay home, the road will be closed. It's only snowing for eight miles at 6,500 feet. The chain installers were working in wet, miserable conditions. It was cold, but not cold enough to snow. It is just before noon. We're at 6,000 feet, just a few miles from the summit, and it is raining. Not only that, this is very unusual to see. The slow lane here of Interstate 80 is underwater. How many, times have you done, how many times have you done chaining where you're actually in several inches of water? Here? Probably two or three times in 32 years. Conditions in the mountains are expected to get worse, and the Highway Patrol says if you don't have to come up here, don't. At Blue Canyon, Ken Pritchett, KTVU Channel 2 News. Few experience the full force of today's storm like those who live at the coast. In Pacifica, trees fell onto homes, huge waves pounded the shoreline, and the wind reached gale force. Even so, there were some folks who actually found a silver lining in all the clouds. KTVU's health and science editor John Fowler has our report. It roared off the Pacific and slammed ashore here. Ripping rain and relentless waves whipping the San Mateo County coast. Gusty, gale-force winds did most of the damage. It's just crazy. I mean, there's, there's trees down all over the place, signs down all over the place. Police said power went out to three-quarters of Pacifica. Down trees, closed lanes on Highway 280, and for a time, all lanes of Highway 35. And rain-loosened rocks dribbled danger onto Highway 1 at Devil's Slide. At the height of today's howling storm, these folks were out walking their dog. I like it out here. <laughs> I just had to come out and experience it. I like to watch the ocean when it's like this. And this windsurfer couldn't resist the 50 mile an hour gusts. It's exhilarating when you get on one, but the rest of the time it's a lot of work. So a, little, a lot of work for a little bit of fun, but that fun is just, it's, it's out of this world. Out of this world fun or not, health officials warned today's heavy runoff carried high levels of dangerous bacteria. And even though big surf tomorrow could tempt some to brave the waves, they're urging everyone avoid the ocean for at least the next few days. Health and Science Editor John Fowler, KTVU, Channel 2 News. Our viewers have been sending us pictures from of the storm from all around the Bay Area. We want to show you a picture now from Ken Clanton. It shows the scaffolding that blew down on Market Street between Kearney and Montgomery in San Francisco. A more familiar sight is still dramatic. Alicia Jones of Fairfax sent us this photo. It's of a downed tree branch near her home at the Creekside apartment complex. And John Mendoza of San Francisco photographed a fence blown apart near his Bay Point home. And to see pictures online, your pictures, or on the air, just email your photos and video to photos at ktvu.com. You can also find a link on our website, ktvu.com. Changes are underway now at SFO to prevent passengers from being stranded for hours on board delayed planes parked on the tarmac. The new policy would enable planes that have been waiting to park at a gate to have access to either the international terminal or 12 remote aircraft parking spots. 
SFO says the new plan also includes having 300 sets of blankets, sleeping pads, and pillows on hand in case passengers need to remain in terminals overnight. Officials say airline personnel are now required to contact the airport duty manager as soon as they realize that passengers may have to remain on a delayed airplane away from a terminal gate for more than an hour. Now it's the polar bears. San Francisco Zoo officials said today that the moat wall around their polar bear exhibit needs to be higher. So workers installed a three-foot chain link fence, which will raise the wall to a height of 16 feet. A glass wall is also being added to the tiger enclosure in the wake of that deadly tiger attack on Christmas Day. And in a related development, the San Francisco city attorney says he wants to inspect the car and cell phones of the two surviving brothers. So far, the brother's attorney has not yet responded to that request. Still ahead tonight, former political fundraiser Norman Sue heard his fate in court today. Find out how long he could spend in prison. A humanitarian crisis is brewing in Kenya as thousands try to find a safe place for their families. Kramer's fed up. Hey, how's the anti-mail campaign going? Not one person went in. It's Sunday. On the next <laughs> Seinfeld. Tonight at 11 on KTVU Fox 2. That's 11,000. Did you take nine? Thousand? Dollars? 20 bucks for the hovercraft. Cash. And that's when it hit me. Everyone likes my stuff, but they want a bargain, like my big deal. Choose a chicken sandwich or cheeseburger with two tacos and a drink right now for just $2.69. I'll give you 12 bucks for the pony. <laughs> he won the derby. Make boating a part of your life. It's the Northern California Boat Show at the Alameda County Fairgrounds in Pleasanton. 800 boats from 7 feet to 70 feet. Ski, fish, sail, or cruise. Step aboard a yacht. Enjoy classic speed boats of the latest and marine accessories. Brought to you by the full-size Toyota Tundra, the truck that's changing it all. And by Allstate. For all your boating insurance needs, you're in good hands with Allstate. Discount tickets at calboating.com. The Boat Show, January 4th through 13th, Pleasanton. Our state is struggling to pay for vital services like education and public safety. So Governor Schwarzenegger negotiated new gaming agreements with four Indian tribes. The tribes will pay a much higher percentage of their gaming revenues to the state and be allowed to grow their gaming business. This will provide over $9 billion to fund essential state services without raising taxes or putting us further in debt. $9 billion. No new taxes, no new debt. It's that simple. Let's ring in the new year with a new you. Let's spend more time in the produce aisle and less time in the drive through Let's give organics the old college try and not just balance our meals, but our lives as well. Let's remember that good health is a journey, not a destination. Let's celebrate food. Let's celebrate life. At San Francisco's Gilman Clubhouse, 49er players and Wells Fargo volunteers help with a clubhouse makeover. The day is part of United Way's hometown huddle, where the NFL and corporations support community projects. The idea is to drive home the importance of being involved in your community through hands-on involvement. Choose a nonprofit. Make a difference. Together, we can build better communities. Learn more about getting involved at KTVU.com. You're watching the 10 o'clock news on KTVU Channel 2, now in high definition. A judge in Redwood City today sentenced former Democratic fundraiser Norman Sue to three years in prison. The sentence came down after Sue tried unsuccessfully to convince the judge to toss out his 1992 no contest plea to fraud. Sue became a fugitive in the early 90s after entering that plea. During subsequent years, he raised millions of dollars in campaign contributions for Democratic candidates. He surrendered last year, but then fled again last September before he was finally arrested in Colorado. Sue's attorney said he will appeal today's ruling. Sue still, by the way, faces charges, fraud charges, in New York. In news of the world tonight, in Kenya, the political upheaval is rapidly turning into a humanitarian crisis. Some 100,000 people have fled their homes to escape rioters who are killing fellow Kenyans and burning their homes. Aid workers say they don't have enough food or supplies to help the growing number of displaced